don't you click that remote, don't you do anything, because if you do, if you change anything, if you move away from this, this TV show, you're going to miss a really, 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 really good show. Because our guest this evening is Paul Schimpf. He is the Re Republican nominee for Attorney General in the state of Illinois. Look, you're going to find out all about public corruption. You might find out something about the size and scope of government. You might find out a lot about what needs to be changed in Illinois. Really, we might get into immigration, we might get into abortion, guns, you know, all that sexy stuff. So don't you, don't you click that remote, because if you do, you're going to miss a really, 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 really good show. You're watching Public Affairs. Berkowitz is my name, and politics is our game, and we are going to be doing lots of politics and public policy this evening, because as promised, our guest is Paul Schimpf. He is the Republican nominee for the Attorney General in the state of Illinois. And, Paul, we're, we're not going to mess around. We're going to get right to it because people looking at this, they got a lot of things. They, they could. They really could change the, the channel. So you've got to give them in the next 30 seconds the gist of what your campaign is about. Is it about public corruption? It is all about public corruption, and people have a historic opportunity. They have the opportunity to elect an attorney general who's not a political insider, who's a prosecutor, not a career politician. But they're thinking, you know, there's been so much corruption in the state of Illinois. We've sent two former, well, two governors uh, to, to, to prison, one a Republican, George mm -hmm. Ryan, one a Democrat, Rod Blagojevich, but. and so many other aldermen. We can't even keep track of how many of those folks have gone to jail. But that's all been done through the U.S. Attorney's Office. And they've come to believe there's not much the, attorney, the Illinois Attorney General can do about corruption. Are they wrong? I believe they are. The Attorney General is the chief law enforcement officer in the state, and we need more out of the Attorney General's office. We need the Attorney General's office to take the lead in anti-corruption efforts. You know, you mentioned that there's been a Republican governor go to jail, there's been a Democratic governor go to jail. Public corruption is not a Republican-Democrat issue. There is, across the board, it's a political class that really has let our state down. So the reason I'm running for attorney general is because I'm not beholden to the insiders and special interest groups in either political party. I spent my entire adult life in the United States Marine Corps, got out last summer, moved my family back to Illinois, and believe that if you want something done about corruption, it's got to be somebody like me, somebody that can come in as a credentialed outsider and actually have the independent perspective to assess and fight corruption. But you are running as a Republican. I mean, that would be fair, right? You're not an independent. You are a Republican. I am a Republican. I'm a, I'm a conservative guy. I will say that I'm a lot closer to the political center than my opponent is, but I am a, I'm a conservative guy, and I'm, I am the Republican nominee. Are you part of the state slate? I am. Uh, I am. I'm actually. I'm very excited to be running on the on the ticket with uh, with Bruce Rauner. I'm excited about his his campaign. I think he's going to make a good governor as well. But it's not it's not Bruce Rauner's job to fight corruption. That's not the governor's job. That needs to be the attorney general's job. And that's why I'm I'm running for Illinois attorney general. One of my core beliefs is that you have no right to complain about stuff unless you try to change things. And when I got out of the Marine Corps, I had a tremendous legal career in the Marine Corps. But I feel like what I can give to the state of Illinois is somebody that has a prosecutor's mentality who can actually go to Springfield and assess how the attorney general's office can become part of the solution instead of the problem with regards to fighting corruption. Now, you look like a young guy. Tell the folks, how old are you? I'm actually, I am uh, 43 years old. I was born in uh, 1971 at uh, Scott Air Force Base in southern Illinois. My dad was a Vietnam-era draftee in the Army. That's how I you know, wound up being born at Scott. Uh, but he got out shortly after I was born, and then uh, he and my mother were, were both school teachers. Uh, so I, I'm the son of two school teachers. I don't have any kind of political pedigree at all. So we're, we're downstate, Waterloo? Is that your hometown? It's the a small town called Waterloo. It's, uh, it's in Monroe County, which is one of the three counties that, uh, that go up against St. Louis, Missouri. But uh, when I left to go to the United States Naval Academy in 1989, Waterloo was a thriving metropolis of 5,000 people. And now we're actually we're up to 10,000 people, you know, so still small, but, but growing. 
And where is it relative to Springfield or any other city downstate? It, it's, it takes me or to... any a, other big city, <laughs> I should say. I don't want to show my bias to small cities. No, it takes, uh, it takes two hours to get, to get to Springfield. I'm about half an hour from, uh, from downtown St. Louis. You know, I do have some Chicago connections. My dad had uh, gone to Riverside, Brookfield, and then I actually wound up uh, marrying a girl from the Chicago suburbs. Uh, my wife went to Glenbart South, so we do, we do make it up here quite a bit. And you went to the Naval Academy? I did. Like fresh out of high school? Yes, I, yes, I did. I was actually uh, I was a National Merit Scholar in high school. You know, I had an opportunity to go to the University of Illinois to study ceramic engineering, but you know, instead I wanted to go to the Naval Academy. So I, I actually I studied studied mechanical engineering at the Naval Academy, but then got commissioned as a as a uh, Marine officer. Now, I don't know if you need to be an attorney formally to be the Attorney General of the state of Illinois, but you are an attorney. I mean, people may be looking at this and wondering, well, he's got a military background. Does he know anything about the law? Well, it, it's, you know, it's funny. A lot of people don't realize that we have attorneys in the Marine Corps, but uh, believe it or not, I've actually gotten to do some tremendous things as a Marine Corps attorney. I ran a legal assistance clinic uh, out in San Diego where I helped retirees and, and young Marines and sailors with consumer fraud and family law issues. And that's important because one of the jobs of the Illinois Attorney General is to work on consumer protection issues. I was also the head prosecutor for the Marine Corps' Western Recruiting Region, which means that anytime a drill instructor or a recruiter mess west of the Mississippi River got into trouble, that case came across my desk. So I've actually, I've, I've personally prosecuted attempted murder, rape, sexual assault, you know, all kinds of stuff. And then the other, the other neat thing that I got to do as, as an attorney in the Marines was I actually, when I was in Iraq, I was the lead American attorney advisor in the trial of Saddam Hussein, which was just a fascinating experience to be a part of that. So you started out in the military. You went for your basic training, your military training. Along the way, you had an opportunity to go to the law school. Right. Well, the military I, paid for that. Is that right? Well, the, the Marine Corps has what's called a law education program. So they basically let me go to go to law school on, on my own while I was still on active duty. And I was receiving a partial salary from the Marine Corps at the time. But I went to actually went to law school down in Carbondale, I, SIU Carbondale. So I'm a, I'm a Saluki as well. All right. And so see, so and you came out of law school, you've traced out, you have a lot of background. Uh, you know, there's that scene What's that scene with Tom Cruise, you know, that movie? Well, the, the, where he the, comes the, in and sees a courtroom, and he says, okay, so this is what a courtroom looks like? <laughs> because remember, he was a military guy. I don't know. What was the movie? The well, the, the, the movie is A Few Good Men, and if, if, you're, if you're a Marine, you either love that movie or you hate that movie. Well, I hate the fact that I love that movie. That is, that oh, is, one, of, that is one of my favorite movies. But, uh, but you remember the scene? I, I do remember was, the scene. Tell, tell people about why... What that set the context for that scene where he says something about the court? What was he doing? Well, he was the he was a defense attorney, but he had been assigned to that case because he had a reputation for plea bargaining his cases settling out, settling cases, settling cases. He never went to trial. Yes, so right. that's that's why that's they said. Did. And so when he finally gets a major case that's going to trial, he goes to the courtroom about day before the trial, and he says. I think it says so. This, so this, this is what, this what it looks, looks like. like, right? But that's not true for you. You've seen a few courtrooms, right? I have, and to actually to to talk about that that movie since we're on it, uh, it actually it, it applied to the Saddam trial because mm -hmm. you know if you remember at the end of A Few Good Men, Jack Nicholson's character, the bad guy in that movie, you know, has a meltdown and basically you know yells, you know, you're right, I did everything that I was accused of. Mm -hmm. And when I was working the... So you got Saddam to say that? We, we actually did, believe, so believe, okay. believe it or not, because uh, the trial was a bit of a circus and Saddam was disrupting mm -hmm. stuff. But I told my Iraqi prosecutors, and I, I, it was an Iraqi trial. It wasn't an American trial. But I was mentoring the Iraqi prosecutors and really uh, talking to them about courtroom strategy and what evidence they needed to put in. Well, when Saddam was acting out, you know, I told them, I said, look, if you guys get the opportunity to present your evidence in this case and you do a good job, Saddam is actually going to snap. It's killing him to sit here and listen to because all this stuff. he was stuff. proud of what he did. He thought he was a good guy. He thought well, he did the good things for the country, right? Well, he, he thought he was justified in what he did. And after they put on their evidence, Saddam actually stood up and said, everything they've said is true. So what? There was an assassination attempt against me. I had to respond. Okay. Unfortunately, the, the what is 
the assassination attempt involved five people. Saddam knew there were only five people involved, but yet he ordered the executions of 150 men and boys that had nothing to do with the assassination attempt because he needed to send a message. In that case, the Saddam case, the Saddam trial, was when was that approximately? Uh, that was uh, 2005, 2006. 2005. You had been a lawyer. You became a lawyer when? 2000. So, so in the five or six years preceding that, have you, did you have a chance to try some cases? I did. I, how I, many, give us a rough total. How many, how many cases have you tried in the military? You know, um, ballpark. As, as far as actual cases where I was in front of a in front of a judge, pro- of a judge yeah. probably probably about a hundred. Hundred, really? Hundred. Well, yeah. it, actually, do you know how many cases do you think Lisa Madigan's tried? <laughs> give me a ballpark. What do you think? You know, I don't know what her what her record she is at like, all. Well, she was like an attorney for about four, well, I think four years. Then she was in the state senate for four years. Then Lisa became attorney general. Now, why did he? Why do you think Lisa <laughs> became attorney? Well, Lisa, we're being fair, so we're just asking Paul, and we'd love to have you on, and you can give us a chance to tell us what you think about Paul's career. But why do you think Lisa Madigan? I think it's right, Lisa. After four years in the state senate, four years, uh, and and then before that, four years as an attorney. Uh, I think she became Attorney General then in 2002. Now, why do you? I was just thinking, Lisa Madigan. That name is oh, it's so familiar. Well, why is that? Do you do you know the last name Madigan? <laughs> well, we all do, but I, I think. No, no. Tell people, because some people watching this may not know why is the name Madigan well known. Who is who is Madigan around here? I mean, is it like a TV show? The well, I think I think I think we all know that the Madigan family does run the state of Illinois. Well, the Madigan that, that family. Mike, that, when you say the Madigan, who, who runs the state? Oh, of it's it's Mike Mike Madigan. And how does he do it? Tell people. Well, he's the uh, he's the head of the Democratic Party in the state of Illinois. He's the, he's spe- the chairman. He's the yeah. speaker of the Illinois House. the Illinois House. Some would say he's what the most powerful politician in the state of Illinois. Well, I, I've actually I've said that right. in, in a number of my he might have been the most speeches. powerful politician in the country, right? I mean, really, who's more powerful than Speaker Mike? Who can right. walk into? Who could have people come into Metra? They're talking about policy, and they walk out with some names on a post-it that are names that people that Mike would like the Metra chairman to hire. I mean, that's yeah. really powerful. So. Like, you might have some friends down in Waterloo. You get to be attorney general. You go over to Metro and say, could you hire these folks? <laughs> could you envision yourself doing that? I, you know, my, because if you did that, if you did that and you weren't the attorney general, well, then Lisa might come after you, right? Wouldn't that be possibly illegal, somebody saying, here's what I'd like for policy, and then uh, here's a few guys I'd like to hire. What, what, I'm just, what's, the, what's those, that Latin phrase we call that for public corruption, when I offer you something and you give me something else? The whole else quid pro quo. Quid pro quo. So, See, I, I'm a, I am a yeah. lawyer if I know the, so I know the know Latin. That, right? But, you know, you, you asked me why Lisa ran for attorney general, and I, I think, you know, Lisa probably ran for attorney general for the same reason that I'm running for attorney general, a, a desire to serve the state. And I think, it, sure? well, no, well, let, well, me, well let, me, let me interrupt just one time. I know it's sometimes over and over. But, you know, Bobby, you might not remember this, but when Bobby Kennedy, you know, his his brother was president, JFK, mm-hmm. and Bobby Kennedy was like a head guy on the campaign, right? And you might not know this, but I think they, I think JFK made Bobby his attorney general. Yes, Sound, that's, sound that's right? correct. Got that right. And so people said, well, why did they do that? And Bobby kind of said, well, you know, I needed something to beef up my resume. <laughs> you think Lisa did that as well? I mean, because really, what was she before to qualify her to be attorney general of the state of Illinois? Well, I, th- I, th- I think it's not, you know, I wasn't back here when she when she got elected. I remember voting in, in, in the election. I, I didn't vote for her. But I think she you was know, a I, state senator. Four years as a state senator. Do you think that qualifies you to be attorney general of the state of Illinois? Four years of legal practice, probably no trials. At least I'm sorry if I got a few. Now, I'm so f- I, now people, look, I'm a fair guy because people might say, okay, I've outlined what was a Oh, I don't know. How, what's, the, what's the proper word for it? It's just like a, a career that was somewhat, oh, skeletal, okay? Mm-hmm. Now, they might say the same thing about you because 20 years in the military, people respect that. You're an honorable guy. That's good character. But, you know, really, what do you know about public corruption? You're almost saying, oh, you're good because you don't know public corruption because you have not been a part of the party, either party. You've right. not been a politician. So you're an outsider. Well, that, right? that, is, that is what I'm saying. But on saying. the other hand, can an outsider who doesn't really know this stuff come in and 
work to ferret out public corruption? Well, I think we need somebody who can come in as, as an outsider. Uh, it's important to note, I'm not running for governor. I'm not running for a legislative position. You know, those offices, you really do need your connections. You need the ability to make deals, you know, build consensus. But that's not what I'm running for. I'm running for attorney general, and I think we need somebody that's not going to come in with preconceived notions about what the office should or should not do. I think we all, we all agree that our state, you know, over the past 12 years has become more corrupt and more dysfunctional. And if, if, you know, if, if, people are, if people are satisfied with the status quo, you know, I've, everything, I, I've never met Lisa, everything I've, I've heard about her is that she's a, she's a nice lady. But if people are satisfied fair, with the status quo. She's, she's had no scandal. She's been there for 12 years. Now, that's a really low bar. <laughs> but seriously, in Illinois, if you're in politics, if you're in statewide office, a fairly important office like attorney general for 12 years, seriously, serious, that's you no know, scandal. I mean, that would be true, right? You'd give her that. In her 12 years as attorney general, has there been even a taint of scandal? You know, I don't know. I, I'm, not a, I'm not aware okay, of not anything. Aware of I'm any. not aware of I'm anything. I'm not aware of anything. Okay. And that's certainly... So you know, that, that, she's got a plus for that. You would give her that. Well, and I, I've actually, I've said on the campaign trail that Lisa has done some good things as attorney general. She's done some good things for veterans. She's done some good things for consumer protection. But the question now is, after 12 years in office... You know, what do we want out of the attorney general's office? I think we, well, I think we, we need want? more. Because, like, a lot of people said the, the attorney general really has nothing to do with the public corruption, with all due respect. Because you might remember, you might remember uh, um, Jim Ryan. You know the name Jim Ryan? Mm -hmm. He was attorney general for a long time. Right. He ran for governor. While he was attorney general, there was all that stuff going on about secretary of state with this guy, George Ryan, right? His governor. I mean, his mm -hmm. guy in his party. And he kind of said, there really isn't a lot for me to do as attorney general about that. I really couldn't have done it. It's the U.S. attorney. Was well, Jim Ryan, I hope I got that right, was Jim <laughs> Ryan wrong? Because he's, a, he's, like, a form, he's a, like a colleague of yours, you know, Republican. Mm -hmm. No, I would disagree with Jim Ryan. I think, that, I think that we need to have the attorney general's office do more about public corruption in Illinois. I think that, you know, it's, it's kind of any time we talk about consumer protection, that the attorney general's office, you know, has, you know, these responsibilities for consumer protection. I can't think of a greater threat to the well-being of consumers in Illinois than a corrupt government that is, you know, spending away their kids' inheritance and, and wasting money and, you know, and, you know, busting budgets. So we do need, you know, even if you're saying, well, you know, the attorney general just does uh, consumer protection. Well, if that's how you feel, we still need to do anti-corruption. But I think looking at the... Do you have the tools to do it? But some people say, you know, the state's attorney, the attorney general, they don't really have the tools. They can't really do wiretaps as well as the U.S. attorney. They can't do investigative stuff the same way the U.S. attorney can. So that's why the U.S. attorney does most of the stuff on public corruption. Do you think they're wrong? I, 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 I do. Uh, the, the people that say that the Illinois Attorney General's office can't do anything about corruption, I would tell them, first of all, you can debate Lisa Madigan on that because she ran on an anti-corruption platform. Uh, I haven't looked at her campaign website recently, but, you know, she's bragged about some of her anti-corruption work. You know, if you're going to do, if you're going to set up an investigation, for instance, of, of Rod Blagojevich, you clearly have the authority to do something about, about corruption. In the Attorney General's office, we need to realize that it's, you know, there's over 600 attorneys that work in the office of the Attorney General. So, you know, it's, in, in my mind, it's a question of how are we going to prioritize the work that the office does. You know, I'm not saying that consumer protection needs to be ignored, but I'm saying we need to focus more on anti-corruption activities. Okay, and do you have a sense whether there is much corruption going on now in the governor's office? Well, I think we're, we're certainly seeing with the, you know with all the the issue of the uh, uh, the yeah, I'm, I'm drawing a blank on the name of the program that's that's drawing all the subpoena the, the neighborhood recovery thing is. Thing. I think I think corruption in Illinois is a uh, it's a target rich environment as my friend Doug Truax used to used to joke. Uh, it, so, wait, do you think the governor, let's talk a little bit about that. Right before the election in 2010, 
the government governor said he was trying to do something about violence. He put some money on the street. That's what they call it. You spread around walking around money. I mean, that's what his critics would say. He would say, no, there was a violence program. He set up a program to try to deal with violence. Some people got paid. Maybe they were gang members. Maybe they weren't. Maybe they did something. Maybe they didn't. Now there's a House bipartisan, as you know, legislative committee looking at that. They've subpoenaed some people. What do you think? I mean, if you were the Illinois Attorney General, hypothetically, if you were, what would you be doing right now having heard that? Tell the people. Would you just be sitting back and reading the paper as I'm doing, or would you be doing something? No, I think that that, is, uh, that that issue is a clear Illinois Attorney General equity. I would be wanting to be involved in investigating that. But how would you do it? Just a, let, uh, just a little test here. Uh, <laughs> like, you know, we're, we're giving you a little test. You're now the Attorney General. What do you have available? How many people are in that office, roughly? How many attorneys? Over 600 attorneys. 600 Over attorneys. 600. So how we many have... do you have to deal with this public corruption issue, because they deal, as you say, with a lot of other things. How many of those hundred potentially could you know, have the tools, the experience to help you do this investigation about the, about the 2010 governor's race, whether Governor Pat Quinn did anything wrong or not? Well, I'm sure some of the uh, some of the 600 t attorneys will have that skill set. Well, but it's, it's figure, a, it's do you a, have 10, 50, 100? What do you think? Oh, I'm sure there's probably there's probably at least 50. Okay, so you convene a meeting, you bring these 50 in, and you what do you do? You bring the top ones, the top 10. So you sit around the table. We're sitting around the table here. You're the attorney general. I'm one of your senior staffers. What do you want from me? What do you want me to do? Well, it's 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 run good. the investigation. Show people, as they used to say when you were like, you ever run track? Coach would say, show me what you got. <laughs> so I'm saying to you, Paul Schimpf, candidate for. Attorney General, the Republican nominee for Attorney General in the state of Illinois. Show, show those folks out there what you got. Well, what, what I would have if I'm Attorney General is I would have a special section that would be dealing with public corruption. I think it's important to note that when I get a, when, if I'm elected, if the people of Illinois trust me, my first action is going to be to, to start what I'm calling up a bottom-up review of the roles and missions of the Attorney General's office. Uh, one of the, the one of the opportunities I had working in, in the Department of, of no, Defense. No, no, keep state of the point. We, well, we, all, we only got about ten minutes left, and I want to cheat these people. They they can read about your resume. They can go to your website. Where's your website? The website is at www.shimpf and then the number four illinois.com. Okay, folks, go there, read that, find out all his background, what he's done, and all that stuff. Let's stay on point. Well, stay on message right now. What are you doing in the meeting? I'm your senior guy. You're the attorney general run the investigation of Pat Quinn? Well, I'm saying get me facts, and then we're going to figure out what jurisdictional means we have to take action. Okay, if assume the, you got jurisdiction. Let's get past that. These people, look, i got to keep their attention. they got, <laughs> they got lots of competitors. i got competitors out there. They can go to Chicago tonight and all that stuff. We're better. Mm -hmm. Okay? Stay here. What are you telling me to do? What kind of facts do you need? What kind of investigation? Well, I'm telling you that, that it is our equity, it is our business to make sure that we fight corruption. So it is going to, it is wherever the facts lead us, we are going to go. And the thing that, the thing that I am unique about that we have a kind of have a historic opportunity here to do is we have a, the opportunity to elect somebody that is not part of the political system in either, in either no, party. Keep, you're not, I don't want the campaign speech, so with all no, due respect. I, you say, we know a little bit about this. You must have read a little bit about it. Now, let's hone in on this. Did, did Pat Quinn hire somebody? Did... Hires the, do you know the name of the person who was running that program? Wasn't it Shaw, something like that? I don't know. I don't, I don't know. So you got to find that person. you got to subpoena her. Can you do that? What's that? Can you subpoena the person who was running the program? Can you do that as an Illinois Attorney General? I actually— Because the will, Legislative Committee now is doing that, but could you do that if you were it will the Attorney de, it, will, it will depend on what the misconduct is. There's certain, there certain jurisdictional powers that I have. I mean, the first thing that you okay, have the to— misconduct, the, the misconduct is she may have taken money, given it— it's, I'm not saying she did this, but <laughs> these are the rumors. This is the gossip, but you've got to find out if they're facts. So mm -hmm. if you say, is, assume, I think the way jurisdiction works, if the facts are as you think, then do you have jurisdiction? So if the facts were that this person running this agency set up a program to give some people money to get out the vote for Pat Quinn in the guise of giving people money to reduce violence, just say mm -hmm. that happened. Do you have jurisdiction then? If those allegations are true. That's how people work this, right? 
We're we're cutting through all of law school here in ten seconds. Okay. Well, the the the, the thing that you're that you're skipping over is the first thing that I would be telling my prosecutors, and that I this is not a campaign speech. This is just fact. I'm going to be able to tell you know the the attorneys that work for me. Look, I don't care where the facts lead us. I don't care whether this makes Democrats look good or Republicans look good. We need to find out the truth, and we need to figure out how we can facilitate holding people accountable. You know, and if it's if it's going to be easier for the fe- for the feds to hold them accountable, then we help the feds. If the feds aren't moving on it, then then we will move on it. But the bottom line is, you know, we make it our responsibility. We make it our equity. Now, another thing people are really focusing on. We should say we're taping this show on um, we're taping this show on July 10th, the year 2010. You've got, what, like five months or so left until the November Only election. four months. Only four months, okay, so getting close. And But what's on the news now? We're here taping this in Chicago downtown. When you go about 10 miles south here into Englewood, you're into a very tough area. Maybe it's a little different, but that's roughly it. You know, in the south side, we have these, we have these repeated shootings a weekend ago Horrific. or so yeah. from Thursday to Monday. I think there was something like almost 80 shootings, 12 people were killed. Five people, I think, alone were killed by the police. Sound right, those statistics? That's, 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 Roughly? Was, that, that's about right. So what are you going to do? Paul Shim, people want to know. We make you attorney general. Is this within your province? Is this within the province of Lisa Madigan? Or is that, I don't know, is that a state's attorney mayor problem? Well, the first line a lot of times is the state's attorney. But I believe gang violence in Chicago is, you know, is the business of the Illinois attorney general. I it think is, I, yeah. will need to, I will need to do something. <coughs> is the Illinois attorney general the, doing something about gang violence right now? I honestly don't know what Lisa Madigan is doing about so gang violence. So what would violence. you do? What would you do about gang violence? Well, I would make it my I would make it my business, and I would ask to have a seat at the table when we start talking about solutions. Because clearly, what you we're doing right now. You would want to talk right to the U.S. Attorney, but the U.S. Attorney is doing a lot about gang. He's trying to do stuff about gang violence, right? I would want to talk to the U.S. Attorney. I would want to talk to the mayor. I would want to talk to you know all the all would the political leaders. Would you talk to the leaders. state's attorney, Anita Alvarez? Certainly. Yeah. Certainly, I, you know. Do you really think anything can be done? Maybe people say, look, this is just a tough neighborhood. People are going to get shot there. Gangs are going to be coming there. You know what the mayor says? We got all this gun control. And he says, but, you know, it can't be effective because Indiana is loose on guns. Wisconsin is loose on guns. So all of these guns continue to flow in. We need stronger federal gun control. I think that's what Ron would say. Would he? And do you disagree with him if you he would, he would probably he would probably say that I would I would disagree I think that we have amongst the strongest gun control laws right now in the no, country and it's not that doing point. Us, it's not doing us wrong. any good address that point he says guns are coming in because we have strong gun control in Illinois but they don't in the surrounding states and so guns guns will find their way in here now address that point what would you do how are you going to are you going to stop those guns from coming in here? Are you going to make people who use those guns illegally go to jail? Paul Schimpf, Republican <laughs> nominee for attorney general, what, do you, what would you do? And what would be better about what you do than Lisa Madigan? Well, what I would do is actually I would look at the constitutionality of the gun control laws that are in existence right now. I think that it's – I don't make – I'm not going to make gun control policy for the state of Illinois. That's not the, that's not the okay, attorney well, general's well, job. So what would you do? You'd loosen gun control laws in Illinois? No, I right? certainly wouldn't loosen You would tighten them? No, but give me something. I'm not getting – what would you do? The people want to know. Well, I would make it – I would make it a priority to be involved in coming up with the solution. You know, I think it is. I think the Give attorney general. Give me some general, potential solutions. Just think, think, you know, think out of the box for a minute. Think quick. What would be some potential solutions to the crime, pro- to the enormous crime problem in the city of Chicago? What? Well, I think we need to get our economy going again. I think that's jobs. I think I think jobs are are the most important thing. I mean, so it's, you're it's out the there breakdown. supporting Bruce Rauner to do that. You think Bruce Rauner can do that by what? Keeping taxes lower. Well, I think Bruce Rauner is certainly a better choice than Pat Quinn. I'm, I'm excited about Bruce's candidacy. I think that, you know, I think that we don't we don't solve our problems in the state of Illinois unless we get the economy going again. I'm, I think I'm the only statewide candidate that did not think this, this pensions fix was constitutional. And people are looking for a bright line difference between me and Lisa Madigan. You know, it, it certainly exists on on the pensions issue. The, the part about cutting the cost of living adjustments, you know, that was clearly unconstitutional, and, you know, Lisa is of a different opinion on that. All right. You've heard it all. You've heard a lot about 
from Paul Schimpf. He is the candidate for gov- excuse me, candidate <laughs> for attorney general. He is the Republican nominee for attorney general in the state of Illinois. That election is coming up in November. He's taking on Lisa Madigan, who's been there for 12 years. Lisa, we'd like to hear from you as well. We're inviting you. This is a public invitation to come on the show separately or jointly with Paul Schimpf. Paul Schimpf, thank you so much. Don't be a stranger. Come back soon. Thanks for having me.